I think that most of us know that sugar is not the best for you. You know, you shouldn't eat sugar all the time, right? It's common sense. At the same time, I also think that people don't really know why. Besides the more common ones, such as, oh, if you eat too much sugar, your teeth are going to rot. And yeah, that will happen. But more specifically for your health, for why it's keeping you fat, I don't think that most people know exactly why. Like, most people can reasonably say that, you know, you eat sugar, so you want to eat more of it. Therefore, the more calories you eat, the fatter you become, right? It's like, the more you eat, the more calories you consume. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom, I'm done. Learn from a professional, kid. And I think that's where most people just end off. But there is more to the story than just that. And I think that if you knew, this would greatly help you because it's not just all sugar. Yes, it's most sugars, but because most sugars have this specific thing in it, which makes those sugars bad, whereas other sugars are not nearly as bad. What is this thing? You know, what is this magical, mysterious thing that is in a lot of sugars that is bad for us? That is fructose. Fructose is a monosaccharide, meaning mono being one, saccharide meaning carbohydrate. Fructose is a monosaccharide that is different from glucose. Glucose is like sort of the universal sugar in our body. It's like, it's what our body uses. Our body does not use fructose. It converts fructose into analogs that can be turned into glucose. But glucose is what our body uses. And the thing is, fructose is different from glucose. So if you like look online, like this is some chemistry. If you look online, glucose is going to be a six carbon ring. So it's going to be hexagon. Fructose is a five membered ring. So it's going to be a pentagon. And so those are just the surface details of what's different. There's more... There's more chemistry into like what's actually different about it, but you don't really know that. You just need to be able to identify fructose versus glucose for this video. Now, why is this difference so important? And there's one big thing that fructose doesn't do nearly as much as glucose. And that is that fructose isn't metabolized or converted into glycogen nearly as much as glucose is. So when you, when you ingest glucose, right, you know, when you drink some Gatorade, when you eat something that has a lot of glucose, like white bread or something, the glucose is going to go through your digestive tract, and then it's going to go to your liver. And in your liver, it's going to be turned into glycogen, fat, or burned up. So most of it is going to be turned into fat, some of it is going to be turned into glycogen, and some of it is going to be burned. Fructose, on the other hand, most of it's going to be turned into fat, and some of it's going to be burned. A little bit is going to be turned into glycogen. And that's not exactly the entire reason why fructose is bad for you. It's not like because of this metabolization where fructose mainly becomes fat that is the issue. Like, that's not really that big of an issue. It's where hormones are involved instead. So when glucose is metabolized in the liver, it's going to send signals inside your body. It's going to spike insulin. And that's basically going to tell your brain, okay, you know, we got some glucose in, we're full, we got it, we got the energy, <clears throat> you can stop eating now. The thing with fructose is that, yes, there'll still be an insulin spike. However, the receptors on the cells that detect insulin, that bind to insulin, right? Because, like, if you have a transmitter, you also need a binder. If you, if you don't have both, a signal's not going to be sent. And that's basically how neurons work. Like, there's... Neurotransmitters that are released <clears throat> that bind into the next neurotransmitter, which signals to the next neuron, and so on and so forth. And so what's happening with fructose is that fructose is inhibiting the receptor for insulin. And what that happens is you develop insulin resistance, and your brain is not signaled that there's a lot of energy in the body, and therefore you stay hungry. Therefore, you eat more. And this is the entire premise of why sugar makes you want to eat more. Besides the addictive nature of sugar, like, yes, that, that, that is very powerful. But 
it also just doesn't make you feel full. At least, sugars with fructose. And I, I want to point out something not really specific to carbohydrates, but relevant to fructose. And it's that ethanol, the alcohol that you drink, is metabolized in a very similar fashion to fructose. And just think about that, right? Like alcohol, a an actual poison. Like no matter no matter what you think about alcohol, no matter how much you drink, alcohol is a poison. Like there's no denying that alcohol is a poison. You drink too much, you will die. There's, hence why you don't drink medicinal alcohol. You know you don't drink rubbing alcohol because you will die. So this alcohol is metabolized the same as fructose. It inhibits. The insulin receptor, it stops you from feeling full, therefore you're more hungry, which is why you can drink a lot of alcohol without feeling full. But the thing is, you could argue that alcohol is actually better because with alcohol there's a self-limiting aspect, right? You can't just keep drinking. I mean, people drink a lot, but there's a self-limiting aspect of where, you know, once you drink enough, you're very drunk and then you're sort of more put off from drinking. With fructose, fructose doesn't have that. You eat fructose, you just want to keep eating it forever. Like, there's no limit to how much fructose you can take because it's not like, it's not as po- it's not as poisonous as alcohol, technically. Like, not immediately, but given its relation to ethanol, an actual poison. And that there's no way to self-limit yourself. Which one's the greater danger? The poison that you automatically limit yourself with? Or the poison that you can't limit yourself with? And further from that, the reason why glycogen production is so important is that if a lot of the calories in sugars go towards fat production, the thing is that a lot of that fat is gonna be stored on the liver itself. And when that happens, you get NAFLD, or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's basically where your liver just accumulates lots of fat. And we've seen this with rising sugar intake in many, many countries. NAFLD used to not ever be a thing. You used to only see fatty alcohol liver disease with alcoholics, hence the name. And given what we know about how fructose is metabolized, you can see why non-alcoholic fatty liver disease exists. Fructose is metabolized the same way as ethanol is, therefore leading to the same disease. And this is also another thing you'll notice, is that when you look at all the diseases that drinking alcohol can get you, you can pretty much get all of them with fructose as well. I mean, just think about that, right? The diseases that you can get with excessive alcohol drinking, you can get with fructose intake, excessive fructose intake. It's almost like they're one and the same. Now, they're not one and the same, but in your body, it's metabolized just like ethanol, just like alcohol. To your body, it might as well be the exact same thing because your body doesn't know. Your body doesn't know that you're intaking fructose. It just knows what it knows. It knows how to metabolize things. It knows how to use things for energy. And unfortunately, that process leads to the same diseases that alcohol leads to. So first one is NAFLD. Second one, diabetes, brain inflammation, arthrosclerosis. Like there's so many that I'm not going to list them all, but There's so many negative health outcomes from fructose. And it's not just because you get visibly fat. Like, although getting fat is the primary cause, getting viscerally fat, getting the fat around the organs, that is the main issue. Becoming overweight, having lots of subcutaneous fat, that's not really the issue. Like, research has found that subcutaneous fat is not really a big issue. Visceral fat that causes so many of the diseases that we are seeing today. That is the real culprit. Hence why there is a correspondence with more obese people having negative health outcomes in comparison to normal weight people. 
at the same time, there are people who are normal weight who have these same diseases because they have a lot of visceral fat. So, I want to point out to you that visceral fat, the fat around your organs, around your liver, around your heart, around your kidneys, that is the reason for so many of these diseases. And the more fat you become, the format, the more fat you get, the more likely you will have more visceral fat. But it's not that obese people automatically are unhealthier. Well, it depends on your visceral fat. So more than just your individual diseases, by consuming fructose, you can infect next generations. So for mothers who consume a lot of fructose, the issue is that that fructose that a mother consumes can cross the barrier between mother and uh, the baby, and it can get into the baby's bloodstream. It can the baby can get the fructose, and it's been shown that babies who've had mothers who consume a lot of sugar, a lot of fructose, their brains are altered in a way that is distinguishable from babies who are in, who did not experience fructose from their mothers. I mean, your baby may have been changed. You may have been changed without your mother even knowing about it, without you even knowing about it, because of fructose. And more than likely, you have been changed because sugar is so prevalent in society now. Sugar's in almost everything. It's so hard to avoid, although, you know, markets are getting better, so there's more non-sugar foods out there, so, you know, it's getting easier and easier over time. But that's for those who know about it, and most people don't know about it, and most people are going to unintentionally harm their baby for the rest of their life. Most people are going to unintentionally alter their baby's brain forever because of introducing fructose to that baby. And just for one example, that's after the baby's born. Most formulas to feed babies with, they have lots of sugar, lots of fructose. So like, even if you get everything right during the pregnancy, you know, you don't consume a lot of fructose. If you're feeding your baby formula, you're doing the same thing. You're doing the exact same thing. You're changing that baby's brain. Because that baby has so much neuroplasticity, has a much greater ability to change because it's literally growing, right? That period of time is where it's most susceptible. And God damn it, man, who's setting things on fire? Ugh. Just wait a bit. Okay, never mind. And so, the effects of fructose is basically insulin resistance, more hunger. And I'm not exactly entirely sure, but I have a suspicion that I'm one of those people who has been permanently affected. So, I remember my parents telling me that I was pretty much allergic to a lot of things as a child. And so, I was allergic to a lot of the formula that they gave me. And until they gave me a specific formula, which I don't actually know. But, out of all the formulas out there, I'm willing to bet that most of them have sugar in it. I'm also willing to bet that my parents did not know enough about nutrition. They were immigrants from China. I don't think that they really knew much about nutrition. And I don't blame them because they just didn't know any better. Right? But this still happened. And I think that if I were to bet, more than likely my mom consumed probably quite a bit of fructose. And that probably affected me. Perhaps you've been exposed too. Actually, I'd be more willing to bet that you have been exposed and alter permanently altered 
given the statistics about how many people are exposed to fructose. It's like most people eat sugar a lot. Most mothers probably eat sugar. Most formulas have sugar, so it's like it's it's there's more than likely that you've been exposed, right? I don't even need to know you. I don't even need to look at your face. Like just out of statistics, it's more than likely that you are. Which is really unfortunate. And so you may have also heard that there's fructose in fruits, right? Lots of fr fructose in fruits. But that's not that big of an issue. Because the fructose in fruits is not nearly as bad as in processed foods. Because there's other nutrients with fruits. You know, if you eat an apple, if you don't peel it, if you don't skin it right, you get fiber. And fiber is going to slow down your digestion of things. It's going fiber by itself is gonna make you feel fuller. It's going to somewhat counteract the effects of the fructose, of the sugars in the apple. With processed foods, there is no fiber. Fiber is stripped out. Why? Because of preservation. Things with fiber won't be nearly as preservable as things without fiber. Hence, it's why fiber is almost always taken out of every single processed food. Oh, and it also just makes you full. And well, companies have discovered that if you feel full, or if you feel fuller, you're going to eat less. And we can't have that, right? Because we want more sales. So we'll just get rid of that for you so that you can eat more. Yeah, you're welcome. And so the range for the amount of fructose in fruits is like around 10 to 50%. Right, of the total sugars that are fructose with processed foods with added sugars this is from 40 to potentially 70 percent it's in general most fruits are going to be lower in fructose than processed sugars not to mention all the other shitty stuff in the processed foods so yes, overall, fructose is bad. Fructose in fruits is not necessarily bad because fruits have so many other things. It has vitamins, it has nutrients, it has fiber to help counteract the effects of fructose. Processed foods with fructose, that is the real enemy because processed foods strip all the nutrients out of it. You'll never find as many vitamins in a processed food as compared to its unprocessed version. You'll never find as much fiber in a processed food compared to an unprocessed food, except for the foods that deliberately put in more vitamins, deliberately inject more fiber in it. But otherwise, most processed foods, you'll never find having more vitamins, more nutrients, more fiber. And that's for reasons. And that's for the reasons I've already outlined. Companies want to make sales. And so the key takeaway from this, the processed foods are making you fat. They are making you unhealthy. They're keeping you fat. And they're permanently altering you so that you act so that you are more susceptible fructose so that you are more susceptible to all of these negative things and that's how sugar or more specifically fructose is keeping you fat and is killing you